Y'all doing? How y'all doing? Philly Dallas. It's a blessing to be back here, man. We want to give a shout out for Paulie, man, with the announcements. Glory to the Most High, man. Miss Ebony, them bringing us into his presence, like always. You know what I'm saying? Chris, Lucius. What's up, Paulie? Yeah, we want to give glory to that, man. You know what I'm saying? That's a blessing, y'all. But, man, it's good to be back in the house of the Most High, man. You know what I'm saying? And, um, like, like um, just to reneate what um, Paulie said, man, Bishop, my pastor going to be in the house on the first, y'all. So, man, y'all please, you know what I'm saying? Y'all invite, you know what I'm saying? Y'all make your way down here, man. And this is going to be one of my first ones, y'all, that, that I'm, I'm a part of in Dallas, you know. So I don't take that light as a blessing, Miss Terry, to be a part of this first one in Dallas, you know what I'm saying? Uh, by the, the glory of the Most High, man. But um, Bishop will be in the house, man, and it's going to be a blessing, y'all. So y'all tune into that, man, you know what I'm saying? Tell your friends and y'all come out and support what God doing, man. You know what I'm saying? A little movement that he started in Little Lafayette, y'all, is now in Atlanta and now in Dallas, y'all. You know what I'm saying? We don't take this light. This is a miracle. This is the hand of the Most High moving, y'all. And it's only the beginning stages, you know what I'm saying? It's only the beginning. So to get in touch, y'all, I got a little something. I'm going to try to move quick, but, um, I'm going to kind of deal with this first, Tim, I, um, or Mr. Dale, maybe. I sent you a scripture, Mr. Dale. Um, I don't want to take up too much time, so we're going to go ahead on and get in touch. Father, we just thank you, God, for what you're doing, God, in Dallas. We thank you for what you're doing in Lafayette. We thank you for what you're doing in Atlanta. We thank you for your people, Most High. Your great people, like they would say in the old days, in the New Old Testament times, God. Who? Because your people was great to you, Daddy. So we thank you for them, Father Lord. And we just ask that you have your way tonight, that I decrease and you increase, that you fill this temple, fill this place with your glory, God. Fill this house, O oh King. Walk up and down the aisles. Come down, Father, and meet with us tonight, Father Lord. Let us hear what thus said the Lord, O oh King. And let us walk in the ways of it, God. Father Lord, for it's you that leaded us, God. Not a man, O oh King. Woo but the most high God. So have your way, master, as we yield unto you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, y'all. <laughs> but, uh, man, I want to kind of um, talk about the elephant in the room, y'all. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we just had, man, like Paulie said, just talking about the things that's going on in the world. How a billionaire, Paul, they said, and committed suicide, then killed himself, y'all. You know what I'm saying? But it's so much stuff that's going on, man, and we just experienced an assassination attempt on our president, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Something that, that, that most of us never experienced. The last one was, was way in March 30th, 1981, with Ronald Reagan, y'all. You know what I'm saying? So, so... We want to, you know, we don't want to just pass on that, man, and we want to pray, man, you know what I'm saying, and lift up, you know what I'm saying, our president, because we don't wish that on nobody, y'all. We don't wish that on nobody, you know what I'm saying, and uh, this is the nation that we live in, but this is not the nation that we are part of, you know what I'm saying? So I just got a little word for us, man, I have, you know what I'm saying, I want to want to talk a briefly, man. I got a scripture God gave me, and then we're going we gonna to get into our main scripture for the night, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Picking up right where we stopped last time by the grace of God. But Tim, my son, to the scriptures in 2 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 1 through 7. And um, God pricked my heart, man, to bring this. You know what I'm saying? Because, because, We want to be a people, y'all, that's, that's, that's not putting their trust in a nation, man. We want to be a people that's not putting their trust in a political party, y'all. You know what I'm saying? 
We want to be a, 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 a people that's not putting their trust in a president or a Congress, y'all. But we want to be a people who's putting their trust in a nation whose king is the most high God, y'all. And the most high God alone. Not in a man, y'all. Not in a nation that's ran by a man, y'all. You know what I'm saying? And this is how we're going to operate, y'all, during these times in the judges. This is how heaven my knows how the people of God operated, y'all. You know what I'm saying? The most high God himself was their king, literally, y'all. And this is how we're supposed to operate as Christians in these New Testament times. We're supposed to be a nation in a nation, y'all, whose king <laughs> is the most high God. And though it's not like that now, y'all, God, who is bringing us back to that place? Whether you know it or not. Whether you know it or not, he's bringing us back to that place, y'all. And Chronicles, bless me, man. God bless me, man. You know what I'm saying? And um, I just want to get in it with you and let you know with the direction that God is bringing us as a people. And mainly for this house in Dallas. You know what I'm saying? By the grace of the Most High, man. I'm going to go ahead on and read it, y'all. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to just kind of talk about it as I read it, so follow me. I'm not going to go too deep because we want to continue in our um, regular broadcast, Miss Terry. You know what I'm saying? And, um, but, but we got to talk about it. Because the things that's going on right now, right before our eyes, y'all, we came with scripture, we came with words before telling you that God is shaking things, Miss Terry. We came letting you know that, that God is doing a work, y'all, to bring his people back to a place where they was. You know what I'm saying? It's his doing. We came with the day of the Lord letting you know that it's God who does bringing all these things about, y'all. In this scripture, bless me, man, because it's the same times and situations that's going on. But God tells his people something. He gives them a word, Mr. Franklin, and that's the word that we got for this house. This is the word that he gave me in the direction we going, y'all. You know? Because he going to use us in these last days like never before, man. You know what I'm saying? It starts off, man, in the Old Testament, it starts off, look, in Chronicles, it says, Now the Spirit of God came upon me, Azariah, the son of Odad, y'all. Azariah, the son of Odad. And he went out to meet Asa. Asa was the king in them times, y'all. And said to him, Hear me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. That's the southern tribe of Israel. Judah and Benjamin, that's the southern tribe of Israel. The Lord is with you while you are with him. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. And this is how with God roll, yeah, y'all. This is how he deal with men, but you got to understand, this is how he deal with nations, y'all. This is how he deal with nations. You know what I'm saying? If you forsake him, he will forsake you, y'all. You know what I'm saying? For a long time, it says, Israel has been without the true God. And our people, we're talking about the true Israel. We're not talking about this, this, this false system that was raised up by men, y'all. We're talking about true Israel. He said, for a long time, she had been without the true God, Mr. Franklin. She had been without the true God. You know what I'm saying? And without a teaching priest. <laughs> without a teaching priest, Mr. Franklin, something that we own right now. God used Joel to prophesy, to call back for the priests in these New Testament times. But you're going to see where I'm going with this. We're not bringing you nothing that's favor. We're bringing you something that God wants you to know because he got work for us to do. Ooh, he got a direction for us to go, y'all. You know what I'm saying? He say, without a teaching priest, man, and without law. Ooh, ooh. And bringing that to us, 
God promised in Jeremiah, you know what I'm saying, that he would pour ooh, his spirit upon us. He, he said that he would do this, y'all. He would write his laws upon our heart. Because whether you know it or not, our people, only a remnant really received the spirit yet. I just was talking to a brother the other day, you know what I'm saying? Most of our churches and God prophesied it in Deuteronomy that we would be very religious. That we would serve wood and stone, y'all. And we packed out these Catholic churches where I'm from. You know what I'm saying? And we packed out serving the dome of the rock, serving stone, y'all. But God is calling his people. He's saying, come from out of her, my people, lest you partake in her iniquity, y'all. So God already knew this. And he promised to write his law upon our heart through his spirit but verse 4 look what it says but when their when when in their trouble they turned to the lord god of israel and sought him and he was found by them when trouble was brewing you got to understand how your people rolled man and how they operated they always when trouble begin to come up they always turn back to their god <laughs> they didn't turn to man. They didn't turn to no president. They didn't turn to no political party, y'all. They turned to the most high God, man. You know what I'm saying, Mr. Franklin? And that's where we got to be. Ooh, we got to be on the right side of history. Not history of men, but his story, y'all. His story. You know what I'm saying? We don't want to get caught up with the world following Ooh, a political party or following a man, y'all. He said it would turn to the God of Israel and sought him and he was found by them. And in those times, y'all, was no peace. <laughs> it was no peace in those times to the one who went out nor to the one who came in. But great turmoil was all on all the inhabitants of the land. Verse 6. So the nations was destroyed by nations, y'all. We got nations rising up against nations in these days we live in. It. We got Russia and Ukraine rising up against each other. We got Israel, y'all, the ones that's occupying our land, which is a trembling cup to the nation, y'all. What they doing? They, they raising up against what? Palestine. War, y'all. Bob Marley said rumors of war. War everywhere, Bob Marley said. You know what I'm saying? But nation, destroying nation, and where we living in our nation, our nation is destroying itself. <laughs> it's rising up against itself right before our eyes. And we got to stay out of that, man. We got to do what does said the Lord, y'all. Look what he's saying, city by city, for God troubled them with every adversity. It was God troubling them, Mr. Franklin, not a man, not just by happenstance, y'all. It was God troubling them with every kind. Ooh, trouble on one side, trouble on the other side. Trouble in this situation, trouble in that situation. Trouble at the top, trouble at the bottom, y'all. But it was God who troubled them with every adversity. But verse 7 is where we want to be and we're not going to go further. This is the word God got for us. He say, but you. <laughs> Out of all that, all that, dealing with all the nations, y'all, you got to understand that to God, Israel is still a nation. Though we scattered, Mr. Franklin, he promised in the book of the Psalms, he said, though the sun shine, though the stars do their thing and make their circuit, you shall always be a nation before me. Ooh, and you ain't got to make yourself a nation. You ain't got to conjure up being a nation like they did in, in, in Israel. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to do that. He said, you're going to always be a nation. No matter what men do, when you go and read um, Psalms 83, how they try to 
wipe our name out from the earth, that it be not remembered. He said, you're going to always be a nation before me. So he's talking to Israel. He's talking to the people of God. Oh, God. And I'm saying Israel for us as a people, his remnant, but also y'all, the engrafted. <laughs> because like I told you before, we separate Israel from the church, but Israel is the original olive branch of the church. We the, we the, we the root of the church. We the original olive branch. We gonna lead the church, y'all. It was Hebrew Christians who flipped the world upside down, y'all. It was Hebrew Christians who first received this Holy Ghost in the upper room. You got to understand this, man. It was your people who received this thing and brought this thing to the Gentile. Now, Paul told us that, that it was based upon on, on, on the Most High God that, that we rejected it Ooh, for their sake. We diminish that they might become rich, that they might receive this gospel. And forgive me for my spitting, but I'm passionate about this, y'all. <laughs> By the grace of the most high. You know what I'm saying? Verse 7, look what he tells you, Israel. Look what he tells us. And this is hope for my, my children and my children, children. Your children and your children, children. Look what he said. He said, be strong and do not let your hands be weak. Mm. Be strong. Don't let your hands be weak. Don't think about it for a second. Ooh, I got a word from a woman of God. She say, only believe. <laughs> only believe, man, because God about to do things in us. Ooh, that if he would have told us, we wouldn't believe it. Ooh, God, because we can't really see it sometimes. Because we look at ourselves, we look where we was. And one time I did a study, man, and just going through in the little disciple classes in Lafayette. And I broke down talking about the gospel in the Anglo-Saxon days and how the gospel, y'all, brought life to the Gentiles. We see how our people is right now with the gang banging and the killing and all that. And we like, God, how you going to deliver us? You know what I'm saying? But you got to understand that the Gentiles was barbarians. They was in the dark ages when you go back and study it. Ooh, they, would, they even understand being sanitary, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to understand what type of people that that gospel came through and changed them people forever. And now we see what we see in the Gentiles. But you don't know how it was before. You know what I'm saying? That gospel did a work, y'all. And it's coming back around the corner to do a work in your people, in your brothers, in your sisters, in your cousins. You know what I'm saying? Look what he said. He said, let your hands be not weak. Why? For your work shall be rewarded. Ooh, it's time to get to work, y'all. We got work to do. Brian just came out with a song, man, Minister Brian. It's time to get to work. And that's what we're going to be about in this house in Philly, Dallas. And we're going to cast a meeting. I already talked to Paul. I'm not going to give you the date, but we want to throw it out vague. You know what I'm saying? And um, we're going to get a times, man, and, um, because we're going to start prayer on Monday, y'all. But we're going to give the meeting the first Monday. And we're going to send the date, you know what I'm saying? Because I want to talk to y'all. You know what I'm saying? Because me and my wife was talking, you know what I'm saying? And we want to share everything that the, that the Lord given us and in the direction we go. You know what I'm saying? And we want to do life with y'all, man. We want y'all to be able to talk and reach out to us. You know what I'm saying? We want to do life with y'all, man. You know? And that's the type of leaders we is. We lay everything on the table. So we want to be vague about it. We're going to set a date. And if you can make it, if you want to be a part of this thing, because all gifts are going to be used. Who we want the women of God to thrive like we talked about last time. We want the men of God to thrive. And we're going to get in touch. It's positions to be filled, yo. Who because we're going up, <laughs> like, like Bizzo said. We're trying to take this thing all the way up, y'all, for his glory. 
for his glory, you know. But remember that your work will be rewarded. Every single thing you do in this movement for Christ. Understand why everything is going in shambles, turmoil everywhere, that God is raising up, nor for you, Israel. Your work shall be rewarded. <laughs> He'll reward of those who diligently seek him, the Bible says. You know what I'm saying? So tuck that in your heart, man. And I had a song we're going to probably play it when we're going out because I'm going to get in. But the thing is, our people looking. Who are they looking for somebody to come through for them? They looking for a savior. They looking for, for, for somebody to bring them wealth and money. Oh, God, they clinching themselves to a political party. They clinching themselves to the nation of a man, ran by a man, y'all. Ooh, when ain't no blessings could be blessed like, ain't no blessings like the most high, yo. He blessed it and make it rich and added no sorrow. You know what I'm saying? And we got to align ourselves with him, yo. With him. And we don't understand that when we do that, when we turn back to him, we not only going to be a blessing to our people. Who God, I can't go deep into it, but... We're going to be a blessing to the world, y'all. He said, you're fallen, brought riches to the world. How much more you're restoring? <laughs> in the book of Romans. How much more you're restoring in the book of Romans, y'all? He's ready to restore us. You know what I'm saying? You see, we waiting on other people, but look how um, Uncle Carice said, said in this song. We are who we waiting for. <laughs> you waiting for somebody else, but you are who we waiting for, Matthew. Sisters in the back, you are who we waiting for. Miss Tara, you are who we waiting for. That's what the song said. He said, you are the preachers. You are the servants. You are the teachers. You are the doctors to heal hurting people in this world. It's going to come through you. But we looking for it somewhere else when we are who we waiting for, y'all. Who will the real people of God stand up because we are who we waiting for. <laughs> we are who we waiting for, y'all. So, Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in us. Bless your people, Daddy, and be with us as we continue in this work. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Give God some glory for that, y'all. Give God some glory for that, man. Give God some glory for that, man. In Jesus' name, man. Yes, Lord. So, man, to get in our text, y'all, for the night, and we're going to pick up where we stop. I'm going to read the text, and we're going to go in. We're in the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 17 through 18, y'all. 17 through 18, B. The Bible said, let the priests who minister to the Lord weep between the porch and the altar. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not give your heritage to reproach, that the nations should rule over them. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? Verse 18, then the Lord will be zealous for his land and pity his people. Bless your word, Master, in Jesus' name. So, y'all, man, we've been going through this series, and we dealt with our first point, y'all, an understanding of the day of the Lord. We went deep into that. Then we went into let the priest, y'all. We went deep into that, you know what I'm saying? And uh, for those that caught it all, man, it's, it's an awesome thing when you catch it all together. But verse 3, you know what I'm saying? We was dealing with weeping between the porch and the altar, y'all. Weeping between the porch and the altar. And last time we stopped off, and I just had like one or two more to give you. You know what I'm saying? We was talking about how the women of God could thrive in the positions that God had gave them to thrive in, y'all. 
You know what I'm saying? That we just went in the body, just laying down, and I hope you was able to grasp it and understand it. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> we tried our best to cut it straight for you by the grace of the Most High. And we talked about how the women of God can operate in the office of an evangelism. Going, looking at the woman of the well. Looking at, at Lydia, you know what I'm saying? Uh, let me see, looking at Phoebe, looking at Priscilla, y'all. And how they did it. How they did it, because it's different how the women doing it now. <laughs> And we talked about how we want to we wanna be obedient, y'all, and not just give sacrifices. You know what I'm saying? We want to get to the end goal in doing all that God want us to do, but we want to do it in the way that God want us to do it. <laughs> it's not just to do it, but God is concerned also with how you do it. It got to be according to his word. He had set an order to things, y'all. And who is us to go outside that order? Who is us to go outside that order? Who is us to go outside that order? He had set it right for a reason, y'all. He knows best. He says thoughts are higher than ours as far as the, the heavens is from the earth. So how could we know this better than him? We get intellectual, we begin to twist words and want to read words, and we done went to college and did this. He said, he said they professed to be wise, they done became fools, man. You know what I'm saying? Trying to extra jeet and go all deep into the scripture. Now, sometimes God said, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. <laughs> and it's always, like I said last time, for our benefit. For our benefit. And it's for the women of God to thrive. We talked about how the woman of God, he commands them to operate in their teaching gift. He commands them. He orders them. He makes sure. He, he wants the women of God to operate in their teaching gift. But he say, let them teach the women of God. Raise up the women of God. Be a bodybuilder in the body of Christ and raise up the women of God. Who teach them how to be chaste to their husbands. Teach them how to walk up right before the most high. Why? She, he said, so the word don't be blasphemed. He said, teach them in Timothy. You know what I'm saying? Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 through 5. Teach them. We talked about that. We ain't going deep and letting you know that it's not just about being older in the world by age but being old in the law that's what makes you an elder in the law you know what i'm saying and you being able to teach women older women younger women you be able to teach them you know what i'm saying that they admonish the younger woman it's all about instructing teaching but not just in the word of god but with your life because you can't teach the woman of God if you ain't living this thing, man. You got to be living this thing. You got to be doing this thing. You got to be, be, be walking it out. You got to practice what you preach, Nick. Paul said, let's we, you know what I'm saying, be excluded. Ooh, we got to make sure. He said, examine yourselves lest you be in the faith, man. And we talked about how that's detrimental and that's good because women, the Bible says in Timothy, they always learning but never coming to the truth. And it leave room for false prophets and false charlatans to come in and take over the women. But you could be that gateway to stop it. <laughs> You're hearing me, woman of God. You could be that gateway to stop it, man. To stop Satan from doing his work. Pastor Darby talked about, he said, we need our women. And when the women of God operate right, it opened up room for the man of God to take his rightful place. We showed you that with Deborah and Barack. Though she was a judge, though she was over, she understood the order that God had set. <laughs> and she called the man of God to come and play his position. 
whether he wanted to or not. That's a woman of God, man. You know what I'm saying? But the woman could not only operate in the office of teaching, you know what I'm saying? But number three, she could also operate in the office of a prophetess. Ooh, God. She could operate in the office of a prophetess, yo. Yeah. This is scripture, man. In Acts 21, 8 um, through 9, the Bible clearly tells us, yo, in verse 8, it says, talking about Philip the Evangelist. Ooh, this man was so deep, I thought about him one time. He was so much of an evangelist, Mr. Dale, that they attach it to his name. <laughs> he was so much about winning souls that they attach evangelists to his name. They attach it to his name. Look what it says on the next day. We who Paul com companion departed and came to Caesarea and entered the house of Philip the evangelist who was one of the seven, and that was one of the seven with, with um, Stephen, y'all, the martyr. Stephen who died and said, forgive them for they know not what they do. They became deacons in the church. Because Peter and the, uh, the apostles, they say, we gonna give ourselves, we gonna devote ourselves to the word and to fasting and to prayer. You know what I'm saying? So the men of God stepped up as deacons, you know what I'm saying? But look what it says in verse 9. He said, and they stayed with him, verse 9. Now the man had four virgin daughters who prophesied. <laughs> who all prophesied. In the office of a prophet is that the prophet hears a word from God and speaks it to the people. Yo. You see, the priests Get a word. The priest go to God on the behalf of the people, but the prophet goes to the people on the behalf of God. <laughs> and she could be a man of God. He could be a man of God. You know what I'm saying? But she could all, he could, it, it could also be a woman of God. He had four daughters who prophesied. Who prophesied. They was prophetess, yo. Know? You know what I'm saying? But continuing, also a woman could thrive in the office of being a deaconess. A deaconess. You know what I'm saying? And for a long time, you know, you could have it wrong reading the scripture. That's why it's good to go back to the Greek. It's good to go back to the Hebrew. You know what I'm saying? And um, our pastor, he broke this down, man, and... Um, you know, gave light, you know what I'm saying, in other commentaries and John MacArthur, you know what I'm saying, when you go back and studying it, getting deep into it, you know what I'm saying, you know, it was a little bit of wordplay that was in error. But when you go back to the Greek, Mr. Franklin, it clears it up. It clears it up. You know what I'm saying? In 1 Timothy 3.11, it says, likewise, their wives must be reverenced not slanderous, temperance, faithful in all things. And it, and it lists the, uh, all that the, that the deacon is supposed to operate in, having one wife. But then it gets to 311 and it says, likewise, their wives. And most people, most preachers have been taught like that all this time. They thought that it was talking about the wife of the deacon. Oh, God, but when you go back to the Greek, it wasn't talking about their wives. It said it could be translated as women. Oh, God. It could be translated as women. Likewise, the women. Oh, God. You know what I'm saying? Likewise, the women, y'all. You know, and I have that in my notes, man, going back into the Greek. You know what I'm saying? As women, y'all. And not just wives. And it's subject scripture. Who it's subject because we all are subject to scripture. You know what I'm saying? There's no private interpretation with scripture. I can't come up with my own, my own interpretation. You know? The Bible said that there's no private interpretation. Now we all get different revelations from the spirit. That's different than an interpretation. You know what I'm saying? To interpret something, you use context in the way that it was written, looking at 
who, where, when, how. You know what I'm saying? That's context. But then you got interpretation. You know what I'm saying? And it's not of a private source, man. So we subject to scripture. You know what I'm saying? And it, and, and it causes us, it causes it not just being only deacons, but also deaconess. Deaconess. You know what I'm saying? And we say all this, man. When I first started this series, I talked about how God bringing back the gifts again. Ooh, woo. He's bringing back the gifts to the body. And some theologians get it twisted. They, they talk about that the gifts are cease. Ain't no gifts cease, man. The Bible said that the gifts is not going to cease till the perfect come. Ooh, and the perfect never came yet. His name is Jesus. Jesus Christ, the righteous, the only perfect one. And until then, the gifts shall be in operating. Why? To perfect the saints, to perfect the body. My gift is not for me, but for you. Your gift is not for you, but for me. Our gifts, Mr. Franklin, that teaching gift you got is for the body. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's for the body. All the gifts in the offices is for the body, y'all. And that's what we want to do. We want to raise up deaconess and deaconesses. We want to raise up, you know what I'm saying, ministers. We want to raise up all these things because we are speaking life. This church will be a full-blown church, y'all. <laughs> having Bible study and Sunday services. It will be that. You know what I'm saying? By the grace of the Most High. And we're going to need all these different offices. You know what I'm saying? We're going to need it, y'all. Because we got work to do. <laughs> we got work to do here. He who have ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying, man. Ooh, God is shifting some things. Ooh, the dispensation is switching. It's, it's, it's turning from Paul back to Peter, y'all. Who the apostle of what? The Hebrews, man. That's the days we living in, y'all. This is where the Ruach is moving to. This is where the spirit is moving to. You about to see Ichabod in a lot of other places that's not moving with the spirit. And God is causing trouble already. You've seen it. <laughs> You've seen it. If they're not operating with this truth, because we're going to look at it, some fight the truth. Oh, God. They resist the truth, even though they know it's truth. The Holy Spirit that made it plain to them. They can't deny it. They know who the people is. But yet they still decide to go another way. To continue on the way that they're going. And Ichabod. Ichabod. Watch it happen. Ichabod, y'all. We submit to the Spirit, man. The Bible says all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons and daughters of God. We are not our own. I'm not my own man. I'm his. And whatever he said do, I'm going to do. Whether it offend the people or not, y'all. Who is about pleasing him. It's about pleasing one, y'all. Come on, man. He done bought me, saved my life, took me out of a dark place. Running the women, selling dope, doing these, all these different things. God done changed my life forever, y'all. The Bible say what? It's our reasonable service. We submit unto him. We do it his way. Who is Yahweh, Mr. Franklin? It's not about Bryce. It's not about a man. It's about the king of kings and the lords of lords, man. Let only his name be mentioned, man. Who let all the other names fade away, y'all? It's him who doing this. It was him in Revelations who revealed this knowledge, this, this secret. Knowing all things, looked at him and said, them that say they are Jews but are not, but do lie. This ain't come from a man. This came from the God man. 
<laughs> this revelation ain't come from a man. It came from the God man, Mr. Franklin. It came from the God man. And to keep going, and we're going to get into it, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to go straight into 1 Timothy, Mr. Um, Dale, after I kind of handle this right quick, Shane, where we at on time? 25 minutes. We're going to try to work with it right quick. Y'all pray for me, please, in Jesus' name. But um, I would be admiss not to tell you this because just like we living in it, God does things like that for us to see. Because just like we living in we got a lot of people operating not in the order that God set. Who and I told you, it looked like a blessing. But is it God's blessing? Because anything that's not God's blessing is going to have added sorrow to it. <laughs> it's only his blessings that make it rich and add no sorrow, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Though it look like a blessing, is it the blessing of the Lord? Because the devil bless. Men and women could bless you. Whoo! But it's going to come with added sorrow. We want the blessings of the Lord, and that's what I want for you. I tell my wife that all the time. We don't want nothing that he don't give us. <laughs> we don't want nothing that he don't give us. Because everything he give us, he going to equip us to handle. Ooh, God, in the name of Jesus. It ain't going to be no added sorrow with it. He going to deal with the devils. He going to deal with the demons. He going to deal with all of that, y'all. Ooh, because the one that living in us make demons tremble. <laughs> he makes them tremble, y'all. Well, it's not me that rebuke you, Satan, but the Lord rebuke you in Jesus' name. But Gil's um, a commentator um, named Gil, y'all. He was the only one to kind of deal with it. Gills is called is um I got it off a of Bible hub hub is Gill ex, ex, um, expedition of the entire Bible. Gills is his name, y'all, and that's what they give. But um, it's many operating like that, and God give us a sneak. And as I was studying this, I'm like, Lord, He popped that tummy, brought that tummy, like, nah, look into that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He like, look into that. I said, okay, I read I'm like, what? I never heard that pre. I never heard nobody mention it, ever. You know what I'm saying? And it's in Genesis chapter 29, verse 9. Turn to it. Because though God had set an order, you're going to always have some that try to do it their way. <laughs> you're going to always have some try to buck his order. Or if they're not bucking his order, they don't know. Mm. They don't know. They're in ignorance, the Bible said. They don't know. And in the Old Testament, that's why God, he winked at sin, knowing that Yahshua was coming. You know what I'm saying? But some just don't know. But he said, after you know. Oh, God. He said, after you know, Mr. Franklin. He said, when you know better, you what? You do better. He got a scripture where he said, stripes going to come to the one that don't know because stripes going to still come to them. They still going to be dealt with. But to the one that do know, who he going to get more stripes. He going to get more punishment. Why? Because you knew and you didn't do better. Oh, God. Oh, God. So when we open this text and look at it and break it down for what it is, we got to do better. We got to do it his way, Miss Candace. You know what I'm saying? We got to do it his way. You know? And um, he talks about it. Look what it says, man. And, it, and I was studying. I'm like, it only is only one occurrence that, that is talked about. And the only other occurrence that we have is with Jethro, um, Moses' father-in-law. You know what I'm saying? Who, when you go and read in the book of um, Jasher, you understand that Jethro was a counselor in Egypt. <laughs> he was a wise counselor under the Pharaoh, under Egypt. You know what I'm saying? You know? And um, 
But here, we're dealing with Laban. Now, we all know Laban, he followed false gods. You know what I'm saying? The father of Sarah, the father of, of, um, of, of, of who that is, Rachel or Rebecca. You know what I'm saying? But let me, let, me keep, let me get into this, I digress, you know what I'm saying? But it says, now while she was still speaking with them, Rachel came with her for the sheep, for she was a shepherdess. And last time I told you, no father would want to make their, their, their daughters be a shepherd. Man. To go and run after the herd. To go and run after the sheep. That's a dangerous job, man. Especially when you got sons, Mr. Franklin. But let's cut it straight. There's only two times. One time that is mentioned and God will do things like that to show you. Now we see that they operate not in the ways of God. And we see who doing it. We see that it's Laban, a man who worshiped false gods. And um, Gil talks about it. He says that, um, that Rachel came to afford the sheep. To, the water, to water them at the well. And she was within sight when Jacob first addressed the shepherds. They had shepherds there. Who God. But now she was come to the well or near it with sheep before her, and she kept them. And she was with, and she was the shepherdess. So Gil tried to say, you know, he says this, he said, well, maybe she was probably operating like Deborah, but she know we didn't have the, she didn't have the wisdom of Deborah. <clears throat> Deborah had the understanding of the way of the Lord. Deborah was a judge, y'all, that she might have servants under her, meaning that she was a shepherdess, but she had servants under her that would do the dirty things that a shepherd would do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's what he said. It might have been that. You know what I'm saying? So, so he said it might have been that. But then he goes down where we want to get to. And he says that, that Jacob, that um, Laban had the hand of the Lord against him. The hand of the Lord was against Laban's sheep. <laughs> Meaning that his sheep had dwindled, y'all, to nothing. You know what I'm saying? To where he couldn't even pay real shepherds ooh, to shepherd his sheep. So he had to make his daughters go. And Gail said that his sons, he had a bunch of sons, but maybe they was too young. You know what I'm saying? So he had his daughters playing like a shepherd. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's cut that straight. And now we got Jethro's daughter, who was a shepherd. We know that Moses found them on, the, on trying to get water for the sheep. You know what I'm saying? But when, when you understand the blessing of the Lord, it added no sorrow. It was sorrow there. Because when they went to get water for the sheep, they had to wait for the shepherds to do their thing. Even if they was first, Mr. Franklin, why? Because ain't no woman could stand up against a man. Eh? You know what I'm saying? So, so, so the men, would, would, they had to go through all kind of things to get water for their sheep. Jethro daughters sometimes would have to stay out there all day, all night. They came back early when, when Moses came through from and Jethro said, how y'all made it back that early? You know what I'm saying? Because they had to let the shepherds go first. So the moral of the story is we see that where, where they operate not in a way that God would have them is added sorrow. Because she not so really supposed to be operating like that. She got to deal with all kind of trouble. Because the shepherd's going to do a bad. What if some product even got raped? We don't know. Why? Because that's not the place for the woman of God. Oh, God in the name of Jesus. And we know that because once Jacob come and set things straight, none of the daughters are over the sheep ever again. <laughs> Jacob becomes the shepherd. When we see it with Moses, Mr. Franklin... Moses become the shepherd. And what happened? The blessing of the Lord. <laughs> Laban, Laban's sheep begin to be blessed, y'all. His sheep begin to be blessed. Why? Because not just because Jacob was in line with God and he was the promised seed, because they was operating in a set order that God had set. 
who the man that came and fulfilled his position, y'all. And that's what we saying. Man, we just cutting it straight. I didn't have to show you this, but when you study it, the Bible says study to show yourself approved, a workman not being ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of God. You know what I'm saying? We got to be just. We got to bring it and cut it right to the best of our ability. Because once you know this truth, because you're going to go out and see them operating in error. Who look for the added sorrow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Trying to show you how to follow the word of God. Trying to show you how to hear God. Who come on, man. Women of God packing houses that don't even need to be packed. <laughs> Why? Why? Because they ever learn it and never come into the truth. I'm going to tell you, Timothy called them silly women. You know what I'm saying? I didn't want to say that because it's harsh, but that's what Timothy says, man. And they pack the place. You know what I'm saying? And they leave their husbands home. He who have ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. We want to cut this thing right, Mr. Franklin. We want the old and the young in the house of God. We want both the men and the women in the house of God. Ooh, ooh. And that's going to take our nation to another. Would a priest stand up? You know what I'm saying? Now let's switch what we got. And we're going to shut it down. We're just going to open it up. Because that's where we're going. We're going deep into prayer, y'all. Deep into prayer. You know what I'm saying? And um, I kind of talked about it. We, we dealt with um, in 1 Timothy Y'all could turn there. We're going to shut it down. I'm going to just open it up. I'm going to read the text. What are we working with, love? 13 minutes. I'm going to just read the text, and uh, we're going to close out, man, by the grace of the Most High. We're going to pray it out. I'm going to send a benediction, man, and send you home, man. And, and next Thursday, by the grace of God, we're going to go deep into this prayer, y'all. It's going to bless us, I have in my notes. And, that's what I'm getting into before I read the text. You know what I'm saying? Just to let you know. Because you got to understand what this thing going to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we, uh, I have in my notes, we was in our third point, y'all. Weeping between the porch and the altar. And then for some that don't know, um, we, we got the scripture, um, the, the video out there, you know what I'm saying? And um, you could go back and understand that. And it, we talked about the, the weeping because God had called the priests. And it was a funny thing because he called the priests, not in the Old Testament time, but in the New Testament time. And we broke it down and went in that he was not talking about the priests of Aaron. After the order of Aaron or the priests of the Levitical priesthood, he was talking about the priesthood of Christ. You know what I'm saying? After the order of who, y'all? Melchizedek. Come on, you know the scripture. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we just went in about that and we talked about how the weeping between the porch and the altar, y'all, was all about prayer. It was all about prayer. And maybe I might, I might just finish it off with this and then next time you're going to be ready to go in First Timothy. It was all about prayer, you know what I'm saying? I have in my notes, y'all. And now we want to shift and turn to 1 Timothy chapter 2. Because as we studied and looked at it, y'all, this weeping between the porch and the altar I have in my notes. And all the priests did, y'all, between the porch and the altar. I'm talking about all the sacrifices, all the incense offerings, y'all. I'm talking about all that the priest did when conducting service, y'all, within the temple, both morning and and evening service, y'all, that took place day unto day in the temple. And we talked about it, y'all, and we said how it all can be correlated 
and how it all can be symbolized unto an act of prayer. <laughs> That's so deep. That's so deep when we went into that. All that the priest did, all the sacrifices, all the incense offerings, all the service that took place, even the breaking down of the word. I just showed you that the priests could have teach. And we know that when Jesus was in the temple, he was speaking with the priests and the scribes and then breaking down the word. And they was amazed of his understanding. But with all that being said, y'all, it could be correlated and symbolized as an act of prayer. Did you know how much value your prayer is? And that's what we want to put in you. We want to show you the value of prayer, bringing you all the way back to the Old Testament. You know what I'm saying? To get you to pray more. Oh, you remember the, the song with Brian Trado, how he said that? Tell me when the last time you really hit your knees and started to intercede for everything your family needs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because this prayer carry weight. Is valuable. You know what I'm saying? And we talked about it just going back. If you remember, we talked about King David. Looking at King David, the one who God called, y'all, a man after his own heart. King David, who understood the heart of God I have in my notes, almost more than all the people in his days. I would say y'all almost more than all the kings before him. And I would say more than all the kings that came after him. David understood the heart of God, Mr. Franklin. The heart of God. That's why he was known as a man after God's own heart. And we seen how David likened his prayer. <laughs> what did David liken his prayer to? And it's, a, and it's a revelation because I'm trying to get you. I'm going to ask you even before I get into it. How do you liken your prayer, Matthew? Nick, how do you liken your prayer? What you correlated to? Oh, if you had to symbolize it, what would it be compared to? How do you liken your prayer? But David being so deep in understanding this thing, y'all, blew me away. Look what it said. In Psalms um, chapter 141, verse 2. Psalms chapter 141, verse 2. Look what David likened his prayer unto, y'all. I'm going to read it. Look what David said. He said, may my prayer be set before you like incense. <laughs> he said, my lifted hands like the evening offering. In this scripture, David teaches us, y'all. He likens his prayer, y'all. He correlates his prayer and symbolizes his prayer unto the incense offering, y'all, and unto the offering of the sacrifice and all that the priest did between the porch and the altar. We showed you a picture of it last time. David said, Lord, let my prayer be like the incense that the priests offer. <laughs> He's on his knees praying, Mr. Franklin. He said, let my prayer be like not just the incense, but let it be like the burnt offering that covers sin. <laughs> oh, you got on. This is deep, y'all. Do you liken your prayer unto a burnt offering that covers sin? Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. That's how valuable your prayer is. That's how valuable your words is calling on the most high God. Because it all correlated to it. As they was doing all these things in the temple, all they was trying to do was pull on the heart of God. All they was trying to do was get the attention of God. All they was trying to do is, is get God to bring down his presence. And we do this through prayer, my brother. <laughs> David give us wisdom about this. You know what I'm saying? He, we can liken it all unto prayer, B. That's why we pray the way we pray, man. You see it. You know it. 
That's why you be praying. Come on, man. We not just talking to an imaginary friend in the air, my daughters. We not just talking to, the, to, the, to, 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 to somebody that's sleeping up there. Nah, we talking to a real God, man. We not talking to no fairy tale. We talking to a God who sit high but look low, yo. <laughs> we talking to a God that here, his ear is bent to the prayers of the righteous. That's the God we talking to. We talking to the God that say, ask and it shall be given. <laughs> we talking to the God that say, ask. He say, even before you ask, I'm going to hear you. And yet while you talking, I'm going to answer you. Ooh, provision is on the way. Blessing is on the way. Healing is on the way. He say, you have not because you ask not. <laughs> What if a people wake up and pray again, Mr. Franklin? What you think they was doing when they was in slavery? They couldn't fight against the master, but they was praying. We just watched Harriet Tubman, our wife. Harriet was a, ooh, a prayer warrior who could have get a vision from the most high. Go watch that. Harriet in the field praying that the master be dealt with. <laughs> In the bed, the boy slave come and see that. And then right after that, God deal with the master. You're not talking to no fairy tale, man. We talking to a just God, Mr. Franklin. We talked about it in the day of the Lord. Who, who, who renders judgment? Who in wrath? Who brings forth justice, y'all? Even in the days back then, they was calling upon God and God was answering. Woman ran a hundred miles. A <laughs> hundred miles and made it free. And I'm listening to the priest because I listen at these things and I watch these things intently, even with music. That's why I'm always listening to music to hear the voice of the master, to hear the voice of my father. I don't just listen just to listen. I want to hear him. The Bible says he even perfected praise through the mouth of babes. <laughs> Are you listening? I don't just listen just to listen. So I'm watching this and I see this. God was answering prayer even back then. You know what I'm saying? Prayer is powerful. Yo. Prayer is powerful. You know what I'm saying? And this last one, just to conclude it, and we're going to go in. So next time, be prepared to go straight into 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, where Paul say, first of all, <laughs> supplication, prayers, intercession. We're going to get into the warfare of things, y'all, because there's a war going on in the heavenly. Our first point going to be dealing with warfare. <laughs> Fighting the good fight of faith. Who God, and then we're going to get into the place of prayer. Just giving you a road map, then we're going to get into the different elements of prayer. And we're going to break this thing down by the grace of the most high God. But to wrap it up, y'all, David not only shows us this, but you know who else, else y'all? You know who else I have in my notes? I have in my notes. But also the one, y'all, who the Bible calls the son of David, who is also the God of David. <laughs> that's, deep. that's deep that's deep you know you know in scripture how Jesus said he said how can he be David's son when David calls him Lord Nick. we talking about the son of David y'all who is also the Lord of David we talking about Jesus Christ the righteous that's who we talking about y'all who would also liken, y'all, 
and make this correlating symbolizing of prayer, y'all. Having all knowledge in every single act of service that took place within the temple. Jesus had all the knowledge of the sacrifices that took place. All the knowledge of the incense that took place. All the knowledge of the reading of the Torah of the priests that took place, y'all. All the knowledge of the Old Testament. In, in, in the Old Testament times, they were called all that. Yeah, we already um, established that the teaching priests. But Jesus had all knowledge in every single thing that the priest did between the porch and the altar, y'all. I have in my notes, but yet Jesus would still decide, y'all, to correlate and symbolize all, y'all, all that took place in the temple. He would still decide. He would still look at Miss Terra having all that knowledge, knowing all that the priest did. He would still look out in his day why he in the temple, why he walking, y'all, why he talking to the people, why he seeing all these different things. He would still call this temple his house what, y'all? Who? Not incense offerings. Not, not sacrifices. Not teaching. Not breaking down the word. And the word is very important. Jesus is the word. Oh, God. But yet he looked out and he said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. <laughs> Having all that knowledge, he symbolized and correlated all that was done in the temple as an act of prayer. He said, my house, Mr. Frank, shall be called a house of prayer. And that's in Matthew 21, 13, y'all. Oh. And we're going to shut it down right there. Our God is awesome, man. And prayer is what it's going to take, not just for the women to pray, but for the priests to stand up and pray and come and gather with us as we do corporate prayer. We're going to do it on Mondays, y'all, for an hour. Jesus said, could you watch with me for one hour? You know what I'm saying? And we're going to meet and we're going to pray, y'all. We're going to make it suitable, a good time for everybody. You know what I'm saying? And, and prayer is awesome. In Lafayette, we call it the school of prayer. You know what I'm saying? And what, you, what it is, you don't have to pray. We all gather together. And the thing about it is, I done went to school. I done went to prayer, Mr. Franklin. And I don't know how to pray. I'm not going to pray. I'm going broken down. I'm gone carrying baggages. I'm gone coming out of, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I got trouble on my back. I got this on my back. But I go in prayer and just, and just get in agreement. Because there's power when we get in agreement with prayer. He said, when two or more touch anything agreeing, come on, sis. He said, you shall have what you ask for. But also for the person that's just coming and just want to just... Just be in agreement. Just be in the presence. I promise you, you leave out with power. You don't have to pray a single word. I promise you, you live that. You leave out lighter than what you came in. I promise you. And the men of God going to pack prayer again. Man, I see it, Mr. Franklin. They're not going to just allow their wives to come and pray. Now, nah, they're going to take the position of being priests, man. We talked about it, how the men got to go before in this area of prayer. It was the priest that stood in the gap for the people. We talked about it, how Isaac, though his wife prayed, she was barren. But sometimes God are not here until the men of God pray. I know you got to work. I know you got to make the bacon, but it's something that's greater than that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Talking to your father. He's able to bring provision in ways that you never thought or dreamed. You might be working too hard. <laughs> Where I come from, they say work smart, not hard. But I will men out there working hard when God done made a way. For them to work smart. 
He said, come pray and I'm going to move some things for you. I'm going to make it easy for you. I'm going to answer, man. We want to go invest in this and invest in that. Are you investing in prayer? <laughs> Are you investing talking to the one who holds it all in his hand? The Bible said that he owned a cattle on a thousand hills, y'all. Everything belongs to him. And he said, I'm better than these men on earth. He said, if you ask, will I not give you? Ooh. He said, if you ask for bread, I'm not going to give you a scorpion. I'm not going to give you a stone. How much more if you ask for the Holy Spirit? So we're going to ask him to move, y'all. And for the sake of time, I'm, I'm just going to ask you to stand. Oh, God. And we're going to go into prayer and we're going to call upon the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we're going to let him move in an awesome and miraculous way, y'all. Because God is here with us. Just like he told Asa, he said, God is with you. <laughs> you got to understand that God is with you. He's here with us, y'all. With all that's going on in the earth, he's here. He's here, y'all. He's here. And he's ready to deliver. He's ready to save to the utmost. Ooh, thank you for that, Lucius. Brother Kit Chris getting things right. Man, we, we thank you, Lord, for the presence. So continue to have your way, God, and hear us as we call for salvation, as we call for breakthrough, as we call for healing, as we call for promotions. God, for promotion don't come from the east or the west, but it comes from the Lord. As we call for our family, God, as we call, God, hear us. Even answer, God, the prayers of our heart, Master. For nothing goes without you seeing, Lord. So, Father, I'm going to pray with them. And then we're going to pray, God. Y'all repeat after me. Say, Father, I thank you for what you're doing. Even in the midst of turmoil, you always... Leave a ram in the bush. So, Father, we thank you for your ram. We thank you for his death. We thank you for his burial. And we thank you for his resurrection. Fill us up, Lord. Save us, Lord. Make us new, Lord. Raise us up. That we might be great for your glory. Seal us with your Holy Spirit. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father oh, Lord, I thank you for your people, God. For you are here, Daddy. You hear their heart. You know what they need. Even got the worship team right now, God. You know all what we going through, even in our households. You know all, God, that we need, O oh King. For you need to sleep nor slumber. So, Master, I'm asking you, God, standing in agreement with your people. I'm asking you to answer, God, every single prayer, God. Show up and show out tonight, God. Let us get a call even after we leave, God, that it is done. It is to lay, oh God. Oh, Master, move for your people. I'm asking you to heal any sickness in their body, God. I'm asking you for the Lord. Anything, any cancer, God, anything that they don't even know about, heal it right now in the name of Jesus. Heal it right now in the name of Jesus. For healing or the children's bread, God. I'm asking you to heal their children. Oh, Father, I'm asking you 
to bless them even in their finances bless them in their jobs any trouble God cause it to cease God or daddy make room for them promote them God show up in a way that only you can God oh daddy I'm asking you God I'm asking you God to to, to, to find the Lord confirm your prophet confirm your word tonight master for it's not me that speak it, but you, God. So, Daddy, let it rain. Open the windows of heaven and pour out your people a blessing, God. That they don't have room enough to receive, Master. You hear it, me, God. Do it, King. Do it everywhere you done move for me, move for them. Everywhere you done healed for me, heal for them, God. Oh, King. Make them great in the earth. I see them, God, as I pray for them. Make them great in the earth, God. Gather us, Master. Oh, King, we receive it. We receive it. Bless your people a lot, like Jabez prayed. For the enlarge our territory. Let your hand be upon us, God. Oh, Master. We promise to be ever so careful to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. Fill this place, King. For you said you be high and lifted up, you will draw all men unto you. You said where the body is, there where the eagles gather. Do it in Dallas, God. Do it in Atlanta, God. Do it in Lafayette, God. Do it, God. I'm fasting for this, Master. I'm praying for this, Master. Do it. For you will not forsake me, God. And you will not forsake your people. So bless them, King. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious so unto you. Good. May the Lord bless you so with your love, peace, in the name of Jesus. So May he bless you, Master. So oh, bless him, King. In so Jesus' good. Amen. So yes, Yeah.